NEMA extra dimensions populate science fiction. But in recent decades, theoretical physicists are talking about this in a very serious way on many levels. I'd like to understand, I, I know what the three dimensions of this world are, and I know the fourth dimension of time that Einstein helped us to understand in a unified way, but how can there be extra dimensions beyond the three dimensions of space and the one of time? Well, it's certainly theoretically possible for there to be, uh, for there to be extra dimensions. Uh, the, the usual analogy people use is, uh, is to imagine that there are other dimensions there, but they're curled up to a very small size. So it's like looking at, uh, at, a, at a garden hose from very, very far away. A garden hose from very far away it looks like a line, but as you get closer to it, you see it has, uh, it has a little bit of a thickness. There's a little circle there with, with, uh, with a finite size. Compactified. So it would be, it would be uh, compactified. Um, and so if, so if you went around this other dimension, that you would very rapidly come back to the same place. That's, that's, that's the idea. Um, now, uh, there are other ways in which the, the extra dimensions might be hidden as well, but one way or the other, whenever there are extra dimensions, you have to come up with a reason why we, we don't just you know, move around <laughs> them like, like, like we move around in the other ones. Um, uh, the idea uh, had a big resurgence uh, in the 70s and 80s with the realization that that string theory with a very, very rigid theoretical structure that you really couldn't monkey with too much, predicted that there should be 10 dimensions. Um, and it also, uh, 10 dimensions of space and time. Um, more recent theoretical developments hoof that up to 11, but anyway, it's a number that isn't <laughs> infinity. <laughs> some, some finite fixed number of, uh, of uh, dimensions. And also, there are lots of solutions of the theory that did indeed curl up the, uh, uh, some number of the dimensions so that, so that, uh, so that the number of macroscopic dimensions would be three of space and one of time. Now, having extra dimensions, that's just a part of the theoretical toolkit. So, uh, it's a possibility. Um, uh, traditionally, they had been thought to be curled up to very, very tiny sizes, maybe close to the Planck length. Um, Which is 10 to the then, minus 10 to the 30, minus 33 centimeters, more technically more like 10 to the minus 31 or 10 to the minus 30 <laughs> centimeters. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Really, really tiny, tiny size. And even then, you know, uh, the shape and properties of those extra dimensions did have some impact on what the effect of macroscopic theory looked like. For example, depending on how many holes there were in the extra dimensional space, uh, that could determine the number of species of electron or other oh. kinds of particle that you might see in the long distance theory. And in the last uh, uh, 10 years or so, it's been realized that you can play a lot more with the uh, extra dimensions. They can have different sizes. They can have, uh, they can, they, they can have different kinds of, uh, of a geometry. And that if the length scales involved with the extra dimensions are a lot larger, they can have a direct impact on, uh, on some of the other problems that we're familiar with in particle physics. And furthermore, that uh, they might put in a showing uh, in, in experiments. Um, so, uh, for instance, some of the fine-tuning problems that we talk about in, uh, in, in particle physics could be solved if there were extra dimensions around the corner. And um, we're not putting them around the corner just because it would be exciting to have them around the corner. They're being put around the corner for a specific reason, to solve some of the problems that have to be solved. What that would mean is that these extra dimensions would then force a, a, a system to, to exist which we have today, which has a lot of so-called free parameters that we have to enter by hand and to make the thing make sense. But if you had these extra dimensions, that, that's the, the idea anyway, that these extra dimensions would force those parameters to be what they are. Exactly. For example, uh, for the mystery of why gravity is so much weaker than, right. uh, than all the other forces. By 10 to well, the 39th or some well, by, compared to electromagnetism? Sure, right. So one, one, one possibility is that, in fact, it isn't much stronger uh, that at the length scale of around 10 to the minus 17 centimeters, where we first start encountering this problem of, of, uh, of, of, of why gravity is so weak compared to everything else, well, maybe gravity really catches up with everything else at 10 to the minus 17 centimeters. But there are extra dimensions in which only gravity propagates, and the ordinary particles and forces don't propagate. Um, so that gravity only appears weak because it's diluting its strength in, uh, in, uh, in extra dimensions. dimensions. Ah. Now, that's... Uh, uh, um, uh, the reason why extra dimensions should then show up and the strength of gravity should catch up at 10 to the minus 17 centimeters isn't our desire to have fun. It's because if it showed up, at, if gravity caught up with all the other forces at 10 to the minus 19 centimeters or 10 to the minus 25 centimeters, it wouldn't solve this problem <laughs> of, of the, this, this, this fine tuning problem that, 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 that we're talking about. So there are well motivated 
there are well-motivated, uh, there are well-motivated scenarios where extra dimensions put in, uh, put in, uh, showing experimentally. Certainly don't have to realize the nature. And I think most, most people, uh, suspect that, uh, that they're a little too far out to be realized experimentally. But, um, they're not, they're not inconsistent with anything, um, and, uh, and it's certainly possible that, that they will put in a show. What about so-called large extra dimensions? What, what does that mean? How large are these? That's, that's a scenario that I, I was just, just, just referring to. Um, if you want gravity to fundamentally catch up with everything else. You so need them to be large. At, at around 10 to the minus 17 centimeters, then you, you need them to be large in order to explain why we thought gravity only caught up with everything else at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. So, so how, it, how large is large compared to the small extra dimensions? Right. So, so just, uh, uh, it depends how many, uh, of the extra dimensions are large, but, uh, but in, in the, in the, in the minimal scenario with two of the extra dimensions being large, uh, they originally had to be something like two or three hundred micron big. Um, so that's very large on the scale of, uh, of a particle physics. And since this proposal was made, people, this makes a very specific prediction that uh, if you measure gravity at distances shorter than two or three hundred microns, you should start noticing that it's different. Right, that in right. fact, the one of our, the, the inverse square law for Newton should turn into an inverse fourth power law <laughs> at distances shorter than two or three hundred microns. Well, people have done the experiment and they haven't seen any modification of gravity at those distances. So that already uh, uh, very strongly constrains, uh, at least this particular realization of the, of the scenario. If there are more dimensions, they can be smaller, so, uh, there are no limits, um, on them from, uh, from tabletop experiments that look for, uh, measurements of uh, Newtonian gravity. But all of these ideas have a prediction that at the Large Hadron Collider, the effects of very strong gravity should start showing up. Um, and, uh, and if, and even if, if string theory is the correct theory, uh, of combining quantum mechanics and gravity, it should put in a showing, um, uh, in collisions at the large, large hadron collider. How, how does this uh, um, articulate with the so-called brains of uh, cosmology, where you have uh, our whole universe would be uh, uh, on uh, a three-dimensional brain floating in a in some fourth or nth dimensional space? Right. Well, so 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 brains are a crucial part of this this picture. In fact, the the existence of brains was 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 what allowed us to do all these. Right. Uh, uh, novel things with, uh, with, uh, extra dimensions for, 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 for the simple reason that, uh, when everything is spread out, um, and, uh, then if you make the dimensions big or small, you make all the interactions weak or strong. Right. Okay. Whereas when some things are trapped to living on a lower <laughs> dimensional surface while gravity lives everywhere, yeah. it's possible to adjust the relative strengths to make only gravity weaker while keeping everything else strong. So, 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 so the brains are a crucial part of the whole story. And there's many, many different scenarios now. Uh, large extra dimensions is one of them. But there's a whole variety of, uh, of, of scenarios that, 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 that exploit brains. Uh, and extra dimensions to uh, do interesting things. And many of them have experimental consequences, so they will live or die on the uh, near-term time scale.